In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Nebrisk remote control. I'm going to show you the setup and options that are available to you, how to start the remote control session, and some basics about troubleshooting. To install the Nebrisk remote control on a device, simply click on the screen here next to the name, and it will ask you for a password to set for VNC. Put in a password and click install. The screen will then change to this icon here, and once it's completed, it will change to blue. Now as completed, simply click on this window and it will start up a remote control session. It will ask you for that password that we set up, and as you can see, now I'm currently remote controlling a computer. Now the computer that I'm remote controlling has two screens. So you can see that there's scroll bars. Easily move the scroll bars along the screen to go to the other. You can choose which option you want to use of remote control in the device's details page by simply clicking on the drop down menu and selecting the one you want to use. You can also update the default setting it's going to use for remote control on a large scale by simply clicking on the ones you want to change, going to the tasks drop down menu and selecting update attributes. And as you see here, there is remote control default. Now there are a few different options that you can set in Navrisk for the remote control. To do this, go into the settings tab, go down to remote control, and for each client you can change different settings. You have the ability to use a single global password for a specific client. You also have an option of how it notifies that person you're remote controlling them. You have an option of notify, which is a balloon pop-up just letting them know. You have an option of requesting the permission before you can get access or you have an option of no notification at all. Once you've set this up, just click apply. In Navrisk, there is an audit section where it will record your remote control time. To access this, simply go into the device, go to the audit table, and you'll find in here a list of the different remote control sessions, which user remote controlled at that time, and how long for. On top of that, you also have a report under the reporting section, in the client facing, if you look down here, you have remote control activity. Simply pick which client you want to run this against, for this example, I'll use Cashflow Sports. Click on Generate Report. And as you can see, I have a list of all the different remote control sessions going on. Now with the Navrisk remote control, there are a few things to remember. One, the device itself must have port 9990 open outbound to the site controller. Two, the address bar up here must match exactly as it is in your system settings. If there is a difference, Navrisk will have a problem with loading the class. Also, Make sure that you have Java installed on your computer that you will be remote controlling from if you are going to use the VNC version. And just remember that you cannot RDP to any of the Windows 7, Windows Vista, or Windows XP home premium versions as they do not have a terminal services installed. If you have any problems after going through these, please contact support at navris.com.